Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, I'm going to be making bacon and ham. Just cured, salt cured, and smoked. Today I'm busy. I've got so much going on, I don't have time to spend a lot of time fiddling around with a specific type of brine or something like this. I'm going to show you how to do it quick and easy, basically. I'm in construction. I've already been on two jobs today. It's only about 1030 in the morning. And you say, you don't have time to get no job done. Well, I dropped one crew off at one place and I went and looked at another job and I got two more to go look at. I'm just telling you that to say, this is for you people that are busy. This is how to do it fast, quick, and easy. The other thing is I've got a brand new smokehouse that's never seen a piece of meat or a wisp of smoke. We've got to fix that today. I've got a absolute pile of bacon and ham right here. Uh, and these, as you can tell, are very fatty. They are mangalitsa. They've been hanging in a cooler, and that's why they're a little bit stiff. The way I have recently, I will say, when I say recently, this year, I came to the conclusion that I do not like necessarily curing them in the whole side. And I'm going to show you how I like to do it. This just takes it, and it brings it down so easy. When I slice my bacon in the morning for breakfast, I, I like to have my pieces about so long. So that's how I make it, just like that. There it is, beautiful. Smells perfect, nice red meat. That's what the mangalitsa is all about. And I will hang that in my smokehouse basically just like that. And so I'll cure it like that. The salt penetrates really well like that and they hang nicely. Now we're getting down into that belly meat, which is the finest of all the bacon. Wow, very nice, very nice. I'm just gonna cut it one more time, right across here, like so. Very hard to beat. I'm just gonna set them over here like this and get my next one out. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful bacon. I'm just gonna trim a little of this up, just square it up a little bit. Some of this is actually leaf fat, which is good for lard. It's, let's just do our thing right here. I really like the Victorinox knife for this purpose. You just get in there and pull her right down. Unbelievable. I've got these in the description, you can grab one. In the description, it's called a Victorinox six inch boning knife. It is good for everything, absolutely everything. So this is the bacons from one pig. One pig that weighed around 220 pounds, roughly. So we're gonna take that. I've got bacons from another pig. I got this many more plus two hams, and the hams are this size right here. When you do your hams, if you're going for long-term storage, you need to cut out this bone here that's, it's this whole, this whole hip thing right here is hooked in with a ball joint right there. You wanna cut all that out. If you're going for a quick cure, and you're just gonna slice it and put it straight in the freezer, or you're gonna can it in jars, you don't have to remove that. And with this ham, I'm definitely not going for a long-term hang. I'm just going to cure it, smoke it, and get it in canning jars, just like you've seen in a previous video not too long ago. So it's time to get this stuff in the salt. So many people ask me, do you reuse your salt? The answer is yes. They say how many times? I use it through the whole season pretty much unless it just some something goes wrong and something goes bad about it. Nothing can really go spoiling it, but it can fill up with moisture. This here is fairly damp, but it's not bad. And I'm gonna show you, we're just gonna get this, these bacons right in here right now. Okay, now you can see my salt, it's not hard. If it, if it turns hard as a rock, then that's one issue that you can have. Just peel it on back. You can see it's a little bit of a slurry down here. If you think that it's wrong to have moisture in the salt, 
What in the world do you think a brine is? <laughs> uh, and we can just easily stack this in here. I like to have plenty of salt under my bacon when it goes in. Because when I come back, I want to cover it completely over like this. Bury that baby. It's like buried treasure. I'm going to pull more than necessary on there so I can stack my next layer just like this. And then we can do another layer of meat. Just like that. And another layer of salt. Very simple. And that, my friend, except for these two pieces, is an entire pig. An entire pig's worth of bacon. I'm gonna go ahead and pull both of them out. I realize I have done quite a few bacon videos on this channel. Every year I do multiple bacon videos. And I just wonder, are you getting sick and tired of seeing me make bacon? If you are, let me know. I don't want to get old and boring. I do not. Now, if you've never seen me make a bacon video, drop down in the comments and let me know because sometimes it's hard to know what to do. Because here I am making bacon, I'm making ham, and I hate not to make a video about it because I know so many people are interested. And if I don't, what am I going to make a video about? I got a Brand new smokehouse needing to be test driven. Very important that we do that because it's going to be hot weather pretty soon and the days for making bacon will be over. And we're non electric here, so we don't just, we can't just uh, throw it in the refrigerator. I've got propane refrigerators, don't get me wrong, but they're a little small, they don't have room for everything we've got plus that. This is quite a bit of space that it takes up to do a whole bunch of bacon like this. You might be interested to know how long it takes my family to eat bacon like this. This right here constitutes about two breakfasts. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Uh, it could be 15 to 20 breakfasts for a, for a whole pig. That's not that many. Of course, I got a bunch of boys that eat like horses now. They eat like horses. I'm gonna get this bacon over here and get it in. One thing that I think a lot of people don't realize, bacon is always looked at as being the delicacy. It's looked at as being, well, you're splurging to eat bacon. But when you're killing pigs, when you have your own hogs, you have this cut of meat. It's not going, you can't make a steak out of that. Bacon is all you can get out of that, except you can grind it for sausage if you don't like bacon. You can grind it up and put it into sausage. It'll be very fatty sausage, but it'll be good. I can promise you that. But we like bacon. And it's not actually going out of our way to splurge so much as it is utilizing what we have. It's called proper utilization. If you're raising pigs, you're putting all that money into them, feeding them. Hopefully, you're not, you've got a cheap way to feed them, but either way you look at it, it's not real cheap. If you're doing that anyway, you might as well utilize those bellies and get your bacon. There's no reason not to, I'm telling you. Now, I'm going to use what's in this other pan here for my hams, and I'm going to set it right down in here, and it'll fit, and that will work out great. I'm going to take the first ham and put him in with the big end on one end. I'm just going to massage that in. If you're going for a long-term cure, you really have to do a lot more than this. This is the most basic, simple thing right here that you can do. Just slap some salt on it. That salt will penetrate into that meat, but it's not going to get down by that bone very well. And that's the problem. Not a problem for me because I'm not going for a long-term cure. But that is a big problem. If you're going to hang that thing all summer long, you have to you have to just pack that, take a knife, go up, pack them hocks, come down that bone this way. It's a big job. And then on this one, we'll put the big end on the other end. Just like this, it's going to fit perfectly in here. 
this pack of salt in here. Pull her right on over. Look at that. Just enough to get them covered good. Now at that point, we're done. We just put this on here. Three days later, we shall be ready to smoke meat. Okay, the day has arrived to get the bacon in the smokehouse and the hams. First thing we're gonna do is get them up here and wash the salt off of them. That's what we're gonna do right now. First up, we have ham. I did a good job of curing, look at that. Nice and dark, good and firm. I like it. All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and take these on over there and get them hung up. All right, time for the bacon, bacon. Oh boy, the candy of the South. Quality of life right there. Right brand bacon eats your heart out. There we go, two pigs worth of bacon right there. Here we go, let's wash it off, wash it off. a smokehouse and smoking your cured meat it's all cured it's not going to go bad it is you don't have to leave it in the smokehouse and obviously my smokehouse got knocked over i brought my smoked meats out and hung them in the summer kitchen so it's got the airflow it's got the cool spring air and here's what it's just hanging up here i got hams and bacon's hanging up here and look at that and then you just take her lay her down and I'm going to slice bacon for our morning, just like this. And you can see it's beautiful. It is absolutely smoked to what we call perfection. And that's the beautiful thing is you can smoke it to however smoky you like it. And if you don't know how smoky you like it, experiment. Experiment a little bit. No problem there. You can buy a slicer if you want all your bacon to be cut perfectly uniform, or you can take a sharp Victor Knox knife and you can just lay it on it. That's another thing you need to experiment, especially with mangalitsa bacon, is how thick do you like it? Because different thicknesses is gonna have different effects on how it cooks. And mangalitsa bacon is very fatty. And that's not like store-bought bacon, so you're gonna to have to deal with different amounts of fat than what you're used to. If it's mangalitsa, if it's not, hey, go for it. Everything is different on a case-by-case -case basis. And you just have to try it, see what you like, 
And if you got a bunch of kids like I do that eat like horses, you're going to have to raise a lot of pigs. People think I was just all the time killing pigs and it's just way exorbitant. You have no idea when you go to the store and you buy packs of bacon, pack of bacon, pack of bacon. You have no idea how many pigs you're eating. You just think, I got another pack of bacon. And that's not, that's not good. You need to know what you're doing. Hang that back up, that'll be ready again next time we're ready. Slide this right over here. That right there, my friends, is good looking. People ask me, how in the world do you keep your skillets so seasoned? Well, season's cast iron. Folks, this is the ticket right here. Cook, cook with it, use it. You set it off to the side, it's not gonna stay seasoned too good. You cook some bacon on it, it's gonna stay seasoned. I'm telling you what's the truth, use it every day. All right, look how it's already turning clear, like translucent. That Mangalitsa fat is so different from other fats, and it's actually good for you. Let's check his fire, see how it's going. Look at that, rolling. So, I'm gonna finish frying this up, we'll get it in front of Frank and see how it is. All right, folks, we made it to the kitchen. Old Frank decided he's gonna pour him some moo juice. Oh, don't overfill it, son. Moo juice. Oh, he likes his milky milk. All right, this video is not about the oatmeal, it's not about the eggs, it's about the bacon. The bacon, my friend, is just about as good as it gets, ain't it, Frank? Let's try it with this. Yep. I'm gonna eat yours then. He got a little bit of false teeth between his bacon there. I like it thick and I like it thin. To be honest with you, I like it all different ways. Mm. That's got the good smoke. What do you think about it, Joe? It's good. This is the last of our bacon, actually, that was smoked in the old smokehouse before it come down. So, so if you like smoky, salty bacon, I highly recommend that you do this. I don't even care. You go buy yourself a pork belly. You don't have to raise the whole pig yourself, but if you do, this is exactly how you want to do it. So we're going to get on out of here for now. On behalf of Frank Rickman and the rest of the McGee team, we hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.